today is Tuesday, October the 22nd, 2013, and I have something here that might interest you. If that looks like a disaster rat nest, it is. This is an Ampeg SVT, a new one, and I'm one of the tubes, one of the 6550s, run six of them right here. One of them is not working right. So, one of them is cold, fairly cold. Here's the board. This thing is a nightmare to work on. I'm going to show you something. That I'm, it's this tube right here that uh, is cold. Cold compared to the other ones. The other ones are not biased correctly because the plates are running red on them. But this resistor right here, I thought it might be an open screen resistor if you can, if I can, it's kind of hard to point and hold. This one right here, 220 ohm. Looks like it's been changed before because see it's all different. These are little 220 ohm resistors. I'll tell you what, it's a real shame. <clears throat> well, let me let me back up and say this first. First of all, they put these little 220 ohm resistors in the screen to act like fuses. So if one of your 6550 shorts out, poof, it blows that that little resistor burns up quickly and instantly. See, this one's different from every one of them. And this is the cold socket. This one, is to see how that one's the same. Uh, that one's no, actually that one's a little... It's like that one's been changed too. And you look at the other side, there's one. There's one. Two of them have been changed. You can see that somebody's been soldering on them. I guess the thing that is, makes me go, wow, holy mackerel. Do you know how much trouble it is to get this thing out? You can have one KT88-6550 go out and you've got to go through this. And here's the control board to this beast. I mean, it's a beautiful lamp, but my God. Also, the uh, he says the little LEDs don't light properly either, so it looks like it's got burned out LEDs. And I'm beginning to wonder about the quality control of these guys. This thing is, 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 a, so you gotta disassemble all of the, a lot, a lot of disassembly to do minor work. That is, uh, that is too bad, huh? I mean, it's massive as, as, as they all are, but I'll show you the, uh, of course, it's got a couple more tubes up here, a couple more 12X7s up here in the control section. If I get this thing fixed anytime soon, I'll, I'll, finish up the video and show you what was wrong. I have checked these resistors and they all seem okay, but there's something wrong here. No doubt about it. Cold solder joint, something. Anyway, that's the first part of it. This is another problem with this amplifier that the client was telling me about. I've got a 9 volt battery and a 100 ohm resistor. He says that uh, no matter what you do, some of these LEDs won't come on. And see, I'm testing them. I think you can see there's the red one. I guess my, I'm not covering it up. Red one, green one, red one, green one. So all the LEDs work. Oh, the reason I'm pointing this out is because I think this amplifier's got something else wrong with it like multiple problems. Hopefully, what I'm going to do with this board right here, and I really don't see anything wrong with it, but I'm going to change these all these 220 ohm resistors out for the screen because uh, yeah, this one does basically does nothing. And uh, retouch all the solder joints. I think there's some real quality control here. I've worked on these uh, newer SVTs before and uh, the client has uh, actually gotten uh, MPEG to give them new ones. Not bad mouthing them, but they're sure a hell of a lot harder to work on than the old ones. Okay, well it's quite a bit later. It's turned dark on me here. And it's uh, up at uh, about 9.40 at night. I haven't been working on it solid since then, but I've put in a good bit of time on it. And it's working very nice. Puts out over 300 watts. Uh, <clears throat> this uh, green LED down here, I think you saw, just saw that uh, the LED is not burned out, but it, it will not come on. 
but it does bias up properly. But here's here's the important part in the last part of this thing, and I'll show you how much power this thing puts out. And one of the things I've learned about these SVTs, and I've thought about including this in a video several times, is you know you got three tubes that work together and three. I think that's the way they're laid out. It's 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 three and three. I believe it's these three and these three, left side and right side. But what I do is I use my little homemade bias probe and I plug in one tube at a time, taking my time, letting them warm up really good, and I measure the plate current by opening up the plate switch there, and it's uh, 20.4. Well, I'm going to go through there and do that to every one of them. And then I'll know the stronger ones and the weaker ones, and then, as best I can with what I've got, it's always nice to have about 10 or 12 tubes, and then it's you have a much better chance of matching them up. I have no chance of matching them up except by getting, like if I have one that measures 20 and one that measures 15 and one that measures 25, well the average of that's 20 and I'll put those together. If that makes any sense. You'll see in a minute how I add these things up, but that's that's one. I'm not gonna make you watch going, going through all six, but I'm gonna go through all six and do that and then I'll show you uh, my results because I'll put a a little white label right there on the top with that number on it. Oh, I'll make that one about 20.2. We'll see. Okay, got them all measured. These can be red. 18, 20 20.2, 16.4, 18.7, 21.6, 20.5, 18. Okay, so what I do is I write them all down and then just start adding them up, playing with the numbers. And if I got this on one side, like right there, I get 56.7 milliamps. On this side, I got 58.7. So I got a 2 milliamp imbalance. That's okay. That's actually very good. These six KT88 6550s matched up actually quite nice, but you do see that they vary all the way from what 21.6 to 18. Now, when you really run into a problem, is when you have one. See, this set is reasonable, but you run into a problem when you got one of two kinds or both, is when they all measure like this except for one and it measures 35 because it's going to want all the current. These three work together, and these three work together, or when you measure one and it measures 10, then you got a problem. Because if you got one that's measuring 35 or 40, what that means is when you set the bias so that the rest of them are drawing a, um, a normal amount of current, that one's taking a lot more, and it's probably going to run a little bit red. It wants to do all the work. So you don't want one that measures really super strong. I actually want them all to measure that, but you're not going to get it. These are normal readings. Now I don't know if the, uh, if these were a um, a matched sextet or not. It actually turned out pretty nice. Actually, it's doing exceptionally well. Now I got to put some screws back in it, but I'll do a little bit more testing. I'll show you what this uh, thing can do now. I got to show you this in case you've never taken one of these things apart. You got to take these four screws out here at the top and here this is the preamp I drop one too I gotta find that one and then of course you got to take the big screws out from the bottom and then you've got to wrestle this thing out the back by making this thing crooked and cockeyed see how it fits in there but you gotta turn and twist turn and twist this thing and wrestle all this out the back and then wrestle it all in the back. Quite a chore. And last here, this panel right here, see it just has a little uh, Velcro pad and then you plug the speaker out of the speaker, the fan in, and this thing just pops in there on Velcro. And uh, now we'll do some testing of it. Get that back in there. Okay, I think the beast is warmed up sufficiently. We've got everything halfway up, the buttons are out, so the thing is totally out of whack on it. We'll drive the, uh, the 0 dB input, and I'm running at 100 hertz, since it's a bass amp. And there it is, 300 and, 
Hey, why? Let's see. Let's look at two of them. Well, I usually test them at about 10%. So that's doing 340 or so watts. 10%. Wiggling a little bit. That ought to be some uh, mighty loud bass. And actually, there's nothing out there past 100 hertz. So it's not doing anything way weird out in the uh, frequency spectrum. If we turn it back down to what I would call really clean, somewhere about right there, just super clean, whatever you want to call that. I would call it pretty clean. 240 watts, 5% THD. This is a voltage across 4 ohms. The way I run it in 4 ohms is I just uh, plug both of these guys in parallel. These are precision 8 ohm resistors. And uh, when I put them parallel, of course, into the to the same outlet back here, you can see them both plugged in over here. You got four ohms. I'm going to spin it around and make uh, some temperature measurements, and that'll be it. Okay, let's see this one. See that one's measuring about 280, 290. This was the cold one. See, so it's okay now. That one's okay. It's hard to get in there. Measure every one of them. 280. Yeah. They're all working. Now, I'll show you something that I, I, that I have been able to relate a number of times. I did save this right here. This is the way the tubes are laid out. As far as current draw. 20.5, 21.6, 18.7. These are all close enough, but if we measured it careful enough, we'd probably find out that this one is probably one of the hottest ones, and this is probably one of the coolest ones. Hot and cold. Now, I don't know if we can really see that. If there was a lot of difference, if this one, as I mentioned earlier, if this one was measuring like 30 and this one 10, we would see a big difference. But uh, I'm going to predict that this one's the hotter one. That's a cool one. Let's see. That one, if we hold it steady there for a while. It's not too hot. It's actually really good. 260, so. Well, they're all the same, aren't they? That's wonderful. That's just fantastic. So there you go. The uh, modern day uh, big Ampeg. Uh, SVTCL, I believe it is. Beautiful. Working great. Hope you enjoy. Oh, and last but not least, I always seem to forget something. I'm getting back into RF, although I have some humongous audio output transformers. These are three 400Zs. This is going to be in a 20 meter amplifier. There's a pair of four 400s back there. Um, I built this a long time ago in a rig that I've never put on YouTube. It's a Collins 30K1 cabinet. It runs a 4CX1000 now, but these are so beautiful, you know, with the plates running orange red, that I thought I would, uh, I, I reassembled it. I had robbed some parts off of it, but I reassembled it. And I'm going to put it back in there. See, it's pretty simple. There's not much, there's not much to them. Filament transformer, RF filament choke there. I haven't got it completely wired yet. You can still see the wire hanging loose there. I'll plug it in here so you can uh, see the tubes. There they are with the, just the filaments on. But that would make a uh, one serious audio amplifier, wouldn't it? And I actually do have output transformers that will work with these guys. I have a pair of them even. Some of the uh, guys around town have encouraged me to make an amplifier, audio type amplifier, uh, with these guys, so uh, maybe I will.